Hello, welcome to the channel. A really quick video today about a simple deployment process uh, and we're going to use GitHub Actions and uh, DigitalOcean to host our application. So really this is a follow-up video to one of my previous videos about uh, simple deployments on uh, DigitalOcean. So the goal there was to avoid using Docker and uh, to utilize simple uh, systemd services uh, in Linux to start our application so we don't waste any resources of our small uh, droplet uh, or virtual machine on running Docker. And on top of that, we were using Kadi uh, as a reverse proxy. And it was really handy because in with like a one line configuration, you can spin up a reverse proxy with a uh, built-in uh, HTTPS support. So all the management of uh, Let's Encrypt uh, certificates is done by this uh, tool. But what we uh, haven't done in that, in that video is uh, how we automate the deployment, right? So uh, what you really want to do is when you push your changes to GitHub, uh, ideally you want to trigger a deployment in your service. Right, and today we are going to use a GitHub Actions for that, uh, and we'll take a look into the demo. So let's say um, if I go here and I do the query to this hono.andreifediev.com, this is where my application is running, and it's uh, just returning hello hono. Uh, source code for, for that is just here. It's a couple lines of uh, JavaScript code. As you can see here, we um, returning this print statement, right? So let's uh, change it. So let's say reload and uh, let's commit this. So now I pushed my changes uh, to the master branch and let's retry it after, after a while. Uh, but for now, uh, what's going on is uh, GitHub repo is configured with a GitHub Actions workflow to deploy. And the deployment process is pretty simple. So as you can see here, I'm saying that the condition is just the master branch. So if you have probably a different environment, you can do that on PRs to deploy in development uh, box. But uh, I'm considering this workflow uh, for to host your hobby project so probably you don't need even like a, a non-production environment for that uh, then i'm saying that it will be run on ubuntu latest and after that we have a ssh agent configured and here is what you want to do in uh, one extra configuration that you need to do in github so if you go to uh, your repo and uh, to the GitHub action secrets, you want to, do, to add uh, this SSH private key, which is how you access your uh, DigitalOcean droplet uh, with SSH. And after that, um, this workflow should be able to connect to your DigitalOcean droplet. And after that, we're just running this deployment script. Uh, but as you can see, uh, we, we're running it through SSH, right? Uh, what we're doing there is we're just calling our uh, scripts deploy sh, and it will be in the root, and this is the name of our repo. So this deployment script is actually part of this repo itself, so it's under script deploy, and here what we're saying is that we uh, changing the directory to our project, then we do the git pull. Uh, to get the latest versions and uh, I'm just running like install here for dependencies in case we added something extra uh, in in our code uh, but if you're not using JavaScript if you're using anything else this is probably what what you want to, to change and finally uh, I'm running this uh, restart of the service of the system uh, systemd so uh, configuration of the service is what we covered in the previous video, but I'll quickly show you. So uh, it's in the readme, I believe, at the, at the end. So if we add this file, 
uh, into system D, system, and then this is the naming for our services. Um, the format is something like that. You don't have to understand every bit of that. The uh, important part is this working directory. So it will be our project root. And then uh, start command is just to run bun and run our src index.ts. So you, again, if you're using something else than JavaScript, or, or maybe you're running different framework, uh, this command will be different for you. Uh, if you're running Java, they'll build like Java run or with a jar or closure or whatever. But basically, systemd will handle start and restart of our service. So let's see if our change worked. So as you can see here, right, I've done the curls and we have this uh, reload now in the return. Uh, that means that our pipeline worked correctly. And let's just check how it looks in the DigitalOcean droplet. So if I connect there, so this is what I have in my uh, home project, uh, home uh, folder. If I go to DigitalOcean, uh, that's where I clone my repo. And then inside scripts, um, there is a deploy sh uh, script that's doing the restart on, on the commit. And um, if I, uh, where is my configuration? Yeah, so this is my config for, for the service itself. It's exactly the same as here. Just see, you need to put it in, uh, in your DigitalOcean droplet first. And yeah, that's it. Uh, so idea is that uh, what I think uh, will work uh, the best for your hobby project is that you uh, don't go serverless, uh, you don't use anything like any crazy project or like tool to deploy. Uh, I would personally recommend to avoid Docker just to save a bit of resources. And uh, from what my experience running some hobby projects, and I was doing it with uh, Docker and uh, Postgres as database, is that it probably uses too much resources. And uh, I think what will work best is that just start really simple, uh, have a single uh, container, like single VM, uh, probably DigitalOcean VM or Droplet or some, something else, uh, the cheapest one, then uh, use Kadi for reverse proxy. It's not using too much resources, but it will handle the uh, certificates for you without any extra configuration. And then you just use uh, systemd uh, services to start your applications and it will handle restarts. And as you can see, we quite easily can do uh, deployment uh, pipelines. So it requires a little bit of configuration on the start, but uh, it feels like really cost effective and uh, uh, we are not wasting resources on anything really. And uh, regarding databases, I would highly recommend just to go with uh, SQLite uh, as the first option. And uh, if you're lucky and your project uh, is serving a lot of users, first of all, uh, SQLite and single container will be able to handle a lot of traffic and you can always scale it uh, vertically. Uh, but if you reach the capacity, and uh, first of all, congratulations, because uh, that means that your project is used by a lot of people. But the next thing will be just to move to distributed uh, kind of like deployment when you have multiple instances. And in that case, you will need a load balancer, you will need to scale your instances in, as Docker containers, and you will need to think about distributing a database. And there are options to have like a distributed version of SQLite, uh, or it will be time to migrate to Postgres with a proper server. Uh, but yeah, I think that's how I would start my next hobby project. Uh, hope it was useful. And also uh, the link to this repo will be in the description if you want to check uh, something. Um, and let me know in comments what you think, uh, if it was useful. Also, please like and subscribe and see you next video. Bye bye.